Hi, Paul. <laughs> Hi, CJ. Let's talk about postcards. Oh, I'd love to talk about postcards. Why do you? Why would you love to talk about it? You know, when I was a kid, I lived in Naples, Italy, and that's when I started collecting postcards and writing to people that I'd gone to school with in California. And you know, I when we have gatherings and we share postcards, I'll take a stack of postcards and to get rid of them <laughs> because I have so many. And now with Popo, I, I'm i making postcards and I've been, I actually have some samples because I knew you're gonna ask me something like that. So for years, I've done this kind of postcard, making my own. Um, so I'll, I'll put a poem on, on a postcard. Oh, I have to show you this one because it's too funny. So that's when I was doing theater. <laughs> show that one again. Wait a second. <laughs> that went by too fast. Oh my God. Look Way long that. ago. <laughs> Yesterday when I was young. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so, um, Naples, Italy, you know, I knew I detected an accent, but um, Naples. Um, yes, the accent, Southern California. I see. Okay. <laughs> but then I went from Naples, Italy to London, and I still have a bit of Brit. Uh, my grandfather was from Scotland, so um, I'm prone to the Scots, as they say. Um, and that could, ex that could explain that haggis postcard I got a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, right, haggis. <laughs> I, I prefer not to partake. Thank you. So, so um, what made you switch from taking what I call store-bought cards mm -hmm. and making your own? What Was there a moment where you said, where you got a card, you know, and said, oh, oh my God, this is beautiful. I want to try and do this. Or what was it like? Well, actually, I started with business cards and doing haiku on business cards. And I'd say when I'd meet someone, here's a poem in your pocket. And I give them out and I, I don't have any examples of that. But um, I did that for a long time. And in 2013, um, I'm in a writing critique group with Nancy Canyon and uh, Sue Erickson. And Sue was talking about Popo which probably had another name then. I mean, I really like Popo because if we, we get it if we get it. And um, and, and if, we're, if we're in Mexico, Popo's dog shit. Oh. And if you're, if, <laughs> if you're in certain American cities, Popo's police. So Ooh. yeah, two, two, two things that uh, get on your feet and you're not happy about them. Or vice well, versa. I will, dig I will digress from dog shit, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Sorry to bring that up during your interview. But no, so, so, so you... I went to Guatemala one time and I studied Spanish at home. And my name in Spanish, the letter is Cejota. Cejota, si. And these little kids said, well, what is your name? And I said, Sehota. Well, they're rolling, laughing, and they're t yelling at their mom, and you know what her name is. Well, they heard Serota, which means turd. <laughs> you know, this this uh, interview just went right into the toilet very quickly. <laughs> oh, no, it did. But but, but doing the cards, you're making your own cards. Okay, so making my own cards. Um, you know, doing it on on a computer was for a long time. And first when, so I started Popo in 2013 and that time frame it was like a lifeline to me. My husband had just been diagnosed with cancer. Um, we were spending a lot of time at the Cancer Care Alliance in Seattle, and um, we were staying down there, and um, he was at the University of Washington Medical Center, and I had a little room where I stayed, and 
it was it was my salvation it it was just you know like oh my god what am i going to do with my time and at that moment i could navigate all over the hospital i knew every back alley and every place you know because i'd walked 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 and um uh, well i'm i'm gonna write postcards and and so that's when i first signed up and oh now some of those people feel like friends i don't think that i have ever met any of them but you know there are people that i i i consider lifetime friends through these postcards these little pieces of paper and was it your nancy Kenya group that informed you about popo yeah, with sue sue erickson particularly and she mm -hmm. did it um for a couple of years um and yeah it was it was in that group that i learned about it and every year that you send it out i send a copy to many many people all over the world and i you know i never get feedback about yes oh i'm your biggest cheerleader <laughs> and um there's there's something well as a writer I journal every day, you know, since sixth grade, I write every day. Well, maybe in college, I had a few other things to do, but um, I write. That's what I do is I write. But the muse gets closer to me the more I write. And I have a very funny muse. She likes to come through the bedroom window and tap dance or wear sequins. I mean, you know, she presents herself because she wants my attention. Um, and so I take notes and I, you know, so I'm not doing it exactly the way I have a zillion little books with um, notes in them that, and sometimes they go on too long and they won't fit on a postcard, but I have a variety of pens and my favorite pen, I just did one that had too many lines for a postcard, but I have a 0 0.005 pen, Sakura Pigma, and I can get a lot on a postcard. And then it isn't India ink and with the rain, sometimes I'll remember to spray it or, and I put them in a little uh, baggie through the mail slot <laughs> and um the mailman's very nice he knows it is i and he gives me my plastic bag back <laughs> that's very sweet yeah that's very sweet is. your muse comes in through the bedroom window as opposed to lennon mccartney their muse came in through the bathroom window i understand oh right that's right, right. So. oh well i'm short and my bathroom window is really tall i see yeah <laughs> you know, to, to, to each their and own. Speaking of them, today is the death day of John Lennon and Imagine Peace. So, oh, that is right. Yeah. Oh my God. I remember the day. I remember the day. Yeah. I had gone to bed early the night before and it was up very early and people were talking about it. I'm like, what are they talking about? Right. Um, how uh, you've been doing Popo for seven years. So, Tell us how this complements your regular poetry practice. That's a, that's a really good comment. Um, sometimes they really grow into something. Um, sometimes, oh, I was going to bring some chat books. I have, sometimes I put a little chat book together um, and I have Norman Green at Threshold Documents print it for me. So it's a nice, a nice presentation. So sometimes I print the short ones um and sometimes i write longer ones but it gets you know i don't know all the technical words to say what happens in your brain but it massages my synapses and and i my other and and this year is it okay for me to ramble <laughs> well it it is and um i was just afraid you were going to say what happens in your brain and you're going to say it's some kind of seizure <laughs> so i was when, when, <laughs> When you're talking about synapses, I was like, I was relieved there for a second. It was just, uh, uh, no. like, oh my God, we had to, and then we went back to the hospital this time for me and um, they're able to uh, take care of that. No, uh, and, and I hate to ask what, what happened to your, to your husband? Did he? Um, he died in yeah. 2016, uh, three so. years. Um, 
and you know th people ask me what I write about and I say sex and death what is there in between that's worth writing about so I have a lot of sex and death um, poems and um, and not all of my poems this year have been very uplifting with COVID, you know. Not many have been uplifting. So that you've been a lot of a lot of death poems this year as well. Yeah, yeah. It's just and my grandson had COVID and recovered. That's and, right. I remember you're telling me that. Oh my yeah. god. And um, the thing is, he hasn't had uh, an X-ray of his lungs to see if there's long-term damage. Um, and it was in Florida, so he was not in the hospital. He was not under care. He was all alone at home at the time. Um, so that was pretty intense, and, and there are people I know who have died, and people I know who, I mean, there was, it, this was, what did you say, a, a fried, things were fried, pan fried this year. Oh, I, I, had, a, I had a line in a postcard poem, something that was pan fried in the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going up in smoke. Yeah. So, um, so, so, anyway. having, so, so, so you, you write about sex and death, you write postcards during a pandemic. And of course, that's the main theme with what's going on death or endings of one kind or another. So, um, but I don't think I got the sense of how this complements your own practice. Ah. Uh. You're, you're good, Paul. <laughs> Bring me back on track. I do digress. Well, I'm well. I'm interested in, in how that how people you know how they incorporate that into their thing. For me, I've always got three or four projects. Of course, you know I write a seventeen syllable poem every day, so mm -hmm. I'm writing that. Sometimes that lends itself well to uh, it being expanded on a postcard. Um, but a lot of the other projects tend to slow down during postcard season because I'm you know I'm putting all the juju into that. When I interviewed Diane De Prima uh, 21 years ago, I think it was 1999, um, I went back to it after she died because I was asked to write an obituary for the Journal of the Plague Year. And she said, you know, when you have a big project, it kind of takes you over. And she was talking about Loba, her epic poem about the divine feminine in the form of a she-wolf. And that feeling of being taken over, mildly taken over every August, and I use the term August loosely, referring to the time between the 4th of July and the end of August. So um, that feeling of being overtaken by a process um, to me is one of life's most beautiful feelings. So um, I, I want to see how it is for other people who do the fest year in and year out. Whereas Sue Erickson is a recovering Popo, former participant, you continue to do it. So there must be something to it. Yes. <laughs> um, actually, you, you know that uh, world peace poets has um, fashioned uh, world peace poetry in February after um, Popo. And uh, so I write 29 or 30 poems in February. I do uh, Napo Rimo. I love getting the prompts of Napo Rimo. And then I do, this is for many, the last five years or whatever. So without thinking of, I'm going to write 90 poems a year, I write 90 poems a year. And certainly not all of them are worth going back and <laughs> recovering. But that gets me started. And it, and I, what, did, what was the word you used? Overtaken. And I would use the word guided by, I'm going to write today. If And see, some people you've interviewed just talk about lazy, lovely August. And for me, August is a month of death. Um, there are things that have happened. I mean, my father died in August. And I am not a summer person, I'm a winter person. And I am miserable in August. And I think I write about the misery of heat and, and I meet my muse in the shade and write about it. <laughs> um, so it keeps me going again, like it did in 2013. 
oh, I'm going to, that's, that's my job is to write, just fill a postcard. And in February for the World Peace Poets, it's also haiku month, write a haiku every day. So I kind of cheat and I write a haiku on the peace poetry. <laughs> I don't think that's cheating whatsoever. Um, take us through the process of you about to write a postcard poem. You're sitting, seating at, uh, you're seated at your desk. You've got the name, you've got the stamps, you've got the card. Um, have you, have you made the card specifically for that poem or do you make a batch of cards and then start writing? How does it, how does it work for you? And then how, how do you write? Tell us about that. Oh, that was about five questions, Paul. Okay. So let me back up. Um, well, the, the bigger question is, tell us about your process. Right. In the middle of the night, I will wake up and hear, that's the only way I know, hear a, a line. And I have a notebook right there in bed. I have a pen. I write it down. And that may be the next day's poem. I can be in the kitchen. I can I really get good ideas in the shower. There's something that comes. Um, so I don't have a, you know, uh, triggered space that, you know, things just come to me. I've always read a whole poem about not having anything to write with when it comes. If you're driving, oh my God, so much can come in that sort of psychological moratorium. Um, so, so I don't meet your criteria, but I have, I have the, the poems that I've made. I don't think I showed you a couple of those because they are right there and they're right here. Okay. So this is one of my first collages. Um, and this is, I just do these random little drawings and um, I don't do them for anybody and they work in any direction. Um, and they're little people. So I draw something say like the eye, but they're little people standing around watching what's going. I, I don't plan those any more than I plan my mm -hmm. poems. Can you show us the back of that card? Oh, the, the back the, of the The writing one. side? So you okay. get, oh, so you just buy blank cards and write on them. Right, yeah. um, the, this is watercolor paper. Um, and so it works a little better because if, if it's not thick enough. And this one is just on a piece of cardboard. I got that idea from Tim. Um, and then I don't know if I use the right glue or anything. I mean, you know, I watched the workshop that um, Tim and Colette. As, as I recall, if you use the right glue, um, you get a little high when you do it. Oh, promise? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I might be misremembering that, but that's what I, that's what I think I heard. Actually, then I probably wouldn't do it because I'm so sensitive to odor. Um, I was just playing there. I, I can't even do any pot now that it's legal. <laughs> it's well, way too... Oregon legalized mushrooms, so may, there's hope for us all. Well, yeah. Did you ever do mushroom? Can we talk like this? Do you edit things out? <laughs> I might have to with this interview. No, um, I, I tend not to, to edit. And um, I, um, I'm reticent to talk about um, sex or drugs. Uh, however, I will say that uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms, when used as a sacrament in a ritual ceremony, mm -hmm. are a powerful substance. And yeah. um, I, I can attest to that and in a in a smaller setting could talk about two specific experiences both of which happen in olympic national park and both of which i did not get lost <laughs> Whoa. okay so so uh, we'll do an off the record chat one day <laughs> yes that sounds good that sounds good yeah i did the 60s so um, so someone so i good what I thought I read, and I could have totally misread it, was we write the first poem, this is this year, and we take the last line and we start the next poem. Uh, 
<laughs> and I may have misread it, but that's what I did this year. Yeah. So I have these little, to the subject totally changes each time, but mm -hmm. that's how I did mm -hmm. it. Well, Judy Kleinberg shared that in a workshop. Uh, and and um, that was a technique that Michael McClure used in Dolphin Skull. And, and Sam Hamill has used that line. I asked Michael about that. And he said that it was a concept he got from Jack Kerouac called alluvials that when you're writing spontaneously and you get stuck you look up a few lines or look up to the start of the poem and read it down and then it'll come back to you the same way sediment is driven downstream um oh, the yes. same way the geological notion of alluvial deposits uh, happens so i think that's um, when i first started hearing about that technique but that Would wasn't a criteria that? A L L U V I A L S, I believe, alluvials, and and McClure taught it at one of the Splab workshops that we did. I, I think he did three or four workshops for Splab back in the day, so I don't remember which one it was. But mm -hmm. he talked about a little known. It was at Splab uh, in Auburn. A little known trick um, I got from Jack Kerouac is how he teased it. So. Okay. Well, right now I'm taking a class, or I've just finished a class at the University of Pel Pennsylvania with Al Filris, uh, Modpo, and we just crashed through all of those poets. And so I have stacks of new books in. And so if I were, because it's not a writing class, it's studying the, the evolution of poetry and who breaks the rules. And um, so I would look up some and then try to write a postcard form in that style. Um, and I can't remember if um, Gertrude Stein made it onto a postcard because I had great fun and, and, and then who, uh, but when the red dress and the empty glass, you know, <laughs> But I don't think I put it on a postcard without any background. I'd have to explain it. But when you do tell people about the fast, let's say somebody gets back to you and says, what can you tell me about this? Why should I do this? What do you, what do you say? Mm. If anyone is interested, if they're not interested, you know, if they're not interested, they wouldn't be asking maybe. If any, and I, remember the phrase, if you can talk, you can write. Um, and, and I facilitate a writing group um, and for many years. And that's what I say It's you know, anybody can do it. And I think people get stuck on the form, you know, which is what I'm, you know, from seventh grade, I've been taught Keats and you know, that old romantic lyrical format. And, and then the shift with Emily Dickinson and Walt Whitman. And, um, and so, okay, so to answer your question, I say, well, what else are you doing? What are you doing for yourself? Um, try it for a year, you know, it is a commitment. You have to say, I'm not going to fail this list of 31, 32, whatever it is. I'm not going to fail. Now, many years, mine have arrived October or November because of other things that were so pressing in my life. Um, but I've always finished. And so there's no reason not to. And I, you know, um, I'm assisted associated what I don't know that's not the word uh, friends with writers international network in Canada and I'd like to get more of them they have so many active things that they do and I'd really like to have more of them join us um, and I think Carol McMurray um, in Point Roberts does this does Carol McMurray join us on this yeah and she Name sounds familiar yeah. yeah, she's more in the haiku community. Right. And I'd like to see more haiku people join us. Um, there's the Haiku Society of America, which might be a good place to just send a little thing, Paul, um, because they have a great newsletter and they 
say what's going on. Um, and this year I didn't get enough international stamps. So all of my international, I had somebody in New Zealand, London, where's the third one? New Zealand, London, I can't remember. United um, Arab Emirates. No. Oh, wow. Japan? No, I can't remember. Um, but what about a postcard poem of your very own that you'd like to share with us for this occasion? Would you happen to have one handy? More many. <laughs> um, no, I'm not going to do that one. Where's this one I wanted to? Right here. There's a hole. There's a hole in my apron, a collection of secrets, passwords, forbidden kisses, an acorn, a silver button, a tiny abacus, plus all these words, words and spaces, slipping syllables, lost lines from Chaucer, scrambled with Keats. Now, only now, time to read the spaces. <laughs> CJ, I'm so glad you're part of this community and I'm so glad we had a chance to sit down at this time and uh, talk about um, what the project means to you. This is such a beautiful thing for me to engage people in this way and um, to, um, you know, to, just to display my thanks for your enthusiasm for this festival that's so close to my heart. So thank you. Well, I thank you for um, keeping on with keeping on with it. And I am continuing, you sent me the list of all the people and I'm still sending postcards, maybe not every day because it's hard for me to get to the post box. Um, but I am still writing and sending postcards and I intend to probably till February and then I'll get a new list from World Peace Post. So, um, it, you, the whole project is a gift to the world because we all go to that, well, I can't do anything. I'm isolated in place. I can't go anywhere. Nobody's wearing masks consistently. It's not safe out there, but I can connect through postcards. And it's that, and I think one person is reading this poem. And then I hear from other people, the people in the post office are reading them. And, you know, if any place that th there's a public thing that they are being read actually by more than one person. So I thank you 